Hi everyone, and today we're going to carry on looking at static chest positions, but this time we're going to be looking at the minority attack, which is probably the more common idea, as we looked at a bit of an off-cut last time in case uh, black doesn't go for the minority, and uh, this time around we're going to be looking at sort of the main ideas and seeing how we can play them. This is from white's perspective, but this could easily work from black as well, uh, as the position may be reversed. So the first question is, what is the minority attack? The minority attack happens in this static pawn structure that we can see on the board, and we can see that white has uh, fewer pawns on the queen side on the left hand, uh, but actually white will use that to their advantage and launch these pawns forward uh, to eventually attack on c6, and if white is able to take on c6, and black is forced to take back, then black will have a backwards pawn on c6, and hopefully that will be a target in the game. Um, hopefully this makes sense, if not, uh, when I show the game, hopefully a bit, bit more clear. This is a very common idea. In fact, uh, it's actually a somewhat recent idea in chess. Until the sort of 1920s, this idea wasn't really well known, which is why uh, openings such as the Kara Khan weren't particularly popular back then, because people just saw this Karlsbad structure and just thought, oh, this is worse for black, until uh, the minority attack came along. So this is a very good development in sort of chess history as well. So the game that I got today is actually quite an exciting one. It's between... Uh, um, Keras uh, playing the black pieces and Smithslop playing the white pieces. These are two uh, pretty well known players, Grandmasters. Uh, the game itself is actually from a German book, uh, Decisive Chess Games in History, uh, by Ludwig uh, Pachmann. Um, he was a very interesting person, he's Ch uh, Czechoslovakian, and he was caught by the Communist Party at the time, and he was actually tortured, and he's got a very interesting life, so um, I'm actually going to link his Wikipedia down below if you just want to do some additional history research, because he was quite an interesting person. Uh, but that's uh, beyond the scope of this video, so you're really going to be focusing on the chess. And I'm also going to skip over the opening, I just want to show it to show that uh, these games do come from real games, and these ideas, so they're not just uh, made up, and I'm not just putting them them out of nowhere uh, but also if this is an opening that you play then it might be something that you'll be familiar with and you might encounter and you might want to come for these situations and you might be able to out prepare your opponent so this comes from a pretty standard uh, queen's gambit and black will attack these are pretty much all the main moves so there's nothing too crazy at this point and we can see that after white decides to take in the center uh, black takes back and we can go back to the position that I showed at the start with the pawns. We've got very similar pawn structure. I mean, it's exactly the same. It's just that we've added some pieces on the board. Now, we're not going to start with our crazy attack just yet. Uh, we don't want to dissipate chess fundamentals. We still need to develop all our pieces, so we need to do that first. And that's what's going to happen. Uh, White brings out their minor pieces, uh, diverts the queen, and finally castles. And at this point, uh, white has achieved everything they want to, the pawn structure is great, uh, all the pieces are developed, and uh, we can go along with the plan. And we need to have these plans, because if we don't, we might as well just sit here and offer our opponent a draw and go home, because uh, there's nothing else to do. Similarly, black's not just going to sit around and do nothing. And as we saw yesterday, black will often play down their semi-open file instead, whereas we try to play down our semi-open file on the C file. And as we saw, the main idea is just going to be playing for b4, b5, and attack this pawn. And in doing so, if we're able to uh, take this pawn on c6, uh, black will be forced to recapture with their b-pawn, and then they'll have a target on c6, as it will be an easy pawn to go after with our rooks. And we'll see that in action. First, black decides to start manoeuvring around and letting his bishop come into the game, like so. Uh, we put our rook behind our pawn, ready to push it. This is a very common idea and we're ready to start the attack. Uh, black decides to bring the knight in. This is a nice move because it also restricts the bishop from uh, moving backwards, and it can't help because imagine the bishop attacking this square, the rook might want to come to it later on. And we start pushing. Uh, black also just wants to still keep developing, start pointing his pieces towards the king side, as they not, they're not stronger on the queen side, they have to play on the other side of the board. And we go for our b5. And at this point, we've pretty much achieved our minority attack, and we're going to be forcing off the exchange, which is to our benefit. Now, you might think, oh, well, if this is such a problem that we're going to take on c6, we've got to take back with our b-pawn. Well, black, not, black doesn't have to do that. They could take back with a piece, and that's what actually black went for, and black played bishop d7. And if you're seeing this for the first time, uh, this might come a bit of a surprise because you were thinking, oh, it's just going to take the pawn. Well, we actually have a second idea, and this is 
why this idea isn't actually particularly great for black because we're actually going to come along with the same sort of plan after takes and you take back with the bishop notice if you take back with the pawn we've got our minority attack our rooks are going to come to this file and we're just going to start attacking uh, down uh, these columns no it's not winning for white but it's definitely much easier to play for white so i definitely recommend to play like this if you're able to get this in the game instead black chose to take with the bishop which seems more natural as now we don't have a weakness on c6 but that's not going to stop white because white because you haven't now supported the centre with a pawn, the pawn in the centre is now the weakness for black, and we're going to attack that with our queen and start piling up. Black has to move the bishop out of the way so they can defend, because we were threatening to take the knight, and then be able to take the pawn in the centre. Uh, white decides to take the pawn anyway. Black has to take back. And now a very important move, and sort of showing why bishop d7 and the bishop taking rather than pawn taking doesn't matter as much as you think it would be because of our great move bishop b5 and the idea here is now just to take uh, black's bishop with our bishop and then force the pawn to be on c6 if black tries to not comply and they take back with the bishop then we can just take back with our queen and this position is just crumbling for black black can't hold on to all these pieces and these pawns and you'll actually find in this position white is actually winning uh, which is quite surprising so black can't take and black has to sit there, so black decided just to develop their queen. Uh, we still develop our pieces. Again, black can't take yet, so there's no rush. Uh, they play h5, it doesn't really seem to achieve too much on the board. Uh, we relocate our knight to a nicer square. We're just defending our king and making sure that we're not getting sorted. And we finally, white has finally decided to take. And we have this very thematic c6 pawn. Of course, white could have taken earlier, but again, we were in no rush. Black wasn't exactly threatening anything. And we can see that, yes, material's equal, and I'm not saying white is winning the game at this point, but the whole idea of these plans is just having a good idea, uh, knowing the targets, and now it actually becomes quite hard for black to play, because there's a weakness over here on the h-pawn, hence why pushing it wasn't a particularly great idea. There's a c-pawn that we can go after, and there's also the a-pawn, which is by itself, whereas we compare that to white's position, and really only the pawn on the A file is the only one by itself. All the other pawns are quite healthy and really well protected by either the king or the other pieces. So we bring the queen to the side. This is a very common idea, just going after those two pawns, attacking the two weaknesses. Uh, black decides to reroute their pieces because otherwise the position is going to start falling apart. And we can just start infiltrating. And again, try and pause this video at any point and try and play this for black. And you'll find that a lot of moves are actually really bad for them. Not, And uh, it's really nice to play for white. So black decide to expand and perhaps um, get rid of the attack against this pawn. Because it was attacked. Uh, white just make sure there's luft for themselves and not getting checkmated on the back crank. That's always good, something not to avoid. Uh, or something to avoid. White to, uh, black decides to trade pieces because uh, there's not really much to do. Um, this is the sad truth of it. Uh, white allows the trade, but on their terms. So they still have the infiltration. The rook is still attacking. And now uh, black has managed to play c5, which is actually quite annoying for white. And we can see that if you're playing this as white, this is the main idea that black will want to play. And by playing c5, we're actually going to be able to get rid of one of the pawns and a weakness that black has. And uh, in this game... Uh, white came back to attack it rather than taking. Because if we imagine we're taking here, uh, then yes, there are multiple weaknesses still, but at least it's a bit easier to play for white, uh, for black. Whereas if we attack it with a rook, we're still applying pressure. Uh, black, of course, has to take. There's not really much else to do. And we take with the knight, not the pawn, because, again, we want to keep all of our pawns intact. And notice how they're all nicely together, whereas black really is spread about. So we're taking with the knight. And I've circled all these weaknesses that we're going to be going after. And if I just quickly turn on the engine, uh, the engine says this is 0.5. But again, I challenge you to find some moves for black, because this is going to be very hard to play. Uh, black just brings the rook to the file. It seems natural. But again, you, these pawns are falling. <laughs> we're attacking them. Notice how this knight move is really nice. It attacks this pawn, but we're also opening up the queen to attack the other pawn. Uh, the bishop defends one pawn, but it can't defend both, and we've already up a pawn. Now, this isn't over for black at this point. It is just a pawn, and queens are still on the board, so there are still chances. 
And after Black's next move, um, this is actually now perhaps a pause the video moment. Uh, White has only one move here to really show advantage and prove that they're actually winning this position. Every other move is drawish, and hopefully I'll be able to explain why. But if you just want to pause the video and see if you can find the best move here for White. So the best here, move here for White is to see perhaps what's wrong with the every other move. Uh, the problem with every other move that's not about the move that I'm about to show, if that makes sense, is that it would force a queen trade on g3. So the very obvious move, queen g3, just to start it off and why this is bad, is that after the trade, uh, white has weakened their pawn structure. And yes, there's still up some pawns, and you're going to even win this pawn over here. Um, your pawn structure has been ruined, it's going to be a bit harder to win the game. Similarly, if you go to h5, uh, you'll be attacked, you'll have to go to g5, and then this bishop will come back and you'll be forced to g3 again, and the same idea. And pretty much wherever you go, the queen is going to be forced to g3 and be traded. So with that in mind, perhaps find a way for the queen not to be forced to g3, where we're going to have a bit of an ugly position. And that move is g4, just blocking with the pawn and making it so that our queen doesn't uh, have to move back to g3 and trade itself for black's queen. Also, we can be a bit scared of this knight coming in and the ideas against our king, but we've equally got enough space and I've just highlighted the g2 uh, square just so we can escape very easily. Uh, black decides to push as there's not really much else to do at this point. They're down quite a few pawns and the position is a bit awkward now. White just brings their knights to the center, moving away out of the attack. Uh, you do have to be a bit careful here. You don't want to fall for any tactics and come back this way, because this would attack the queen and the knight at the same time. You'd be losing material. So you do have to be careful. Uh, this isn't just a walk in the park. Um, black takes. I mean, there's not really much to do. Again, we take with the knight because we want to have this healthy pawn structure. Uh, black brings their uh, queen in. We attack it back. And now we're just going after more pawns, and black really doesn't have much to do. And after a few more moves, we can see that uh, white is just up too many pawns, too many material, and eventually uh, black went on to resign this game. And it's quite a clinical finish, and it's not really too clear where black went super wrong here. I guess maybe the h-pawn pushing was just another weakness and another uh, nail in the coffin. But even if black hadn't done that, then there were still a lot of weaknesses in the camp and it would be very hard for them to play. Which is why I think the minority attack is such a useful weapon for white or black because the position could be reversed as it becomes very hard for the defending side to play. Whereas the attacker really doesn't have many issues as long as they keep their pawns together and don't separate them. Um, but yeah, hopefully that was useful in this video, showing the minority attack and highlighting it. Um, perhaps if there's any other ideas that you want to show up for Blast of the Past, uh, let me know below and I'll have a look at them. Uh, but thanks.